How can we make our words in our daily lives to be sweet as honey and as valuable as gold? Let's allow the psalmist today to speak to our hearts of how relevant it is for a Christian and a child of God to speak according to his word. Good morning, I am Pastor Carlos Rios and this is our devotional Maná, a daily adventure with God. Do you know that the entire family of Maná is going to have an encounter in this, this year, 2024, and you are cordially invited along with your family in the city of Armenia, Colombia. We will be spending a weekend together, a long weekend, in other words, from Friday through Monday, three nights at a wonderful hotel with all the meals. And in addition, each group will have their own event. In other words, the children will have their own event, the youth, men and women, this will be unprecedented and you cannot miss out on this opportunity. So we have designed a plan so that you can pay on a monthly basis to make it more convenient. And so if you want to join with your family, send us a message and we'll send you a link with all the details and information. We're reading Psalm 19. And with this, I want to wrap up the series that we've been carrying out for the last two weeks in regards to the importance and relevance of God's word. I hope God has spoken to your hearts. I hope God continues to place in you the importance and the relevance of God's word in the daily living of each and every child of God. This is why I want us to review this Psalm 19, the last expression here in verse 14, where it says, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. So today we should ask ourselves a question before we begin with the explanation. How can we make the speech of our lips, of our mouth, and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable before God? How can we do this? Well, I'm going to go back in the same psalm and join me in verse 10, where it talks about God's word and says that it is to be desired more than gold and more than refined gold sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. These two comparisons that the psalmist makes should bring into our hearts this morning. The first one, notice that it is saying that the Bible is sweeter than honey. And in human terms, what it is trying to say is that there's nothing sweeter than honey. But the psalmist is saying that there is something sweeter and it is God's word. And the second comparison is the same. There's nothing more valuable than gold except for God's word. Now let's talk about the verse I want to talk to you about. When the psalmist says, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. What is he referring to? To these two things that we must achieve in our lives when we speak. Here's a secret for every child of God. Write this down. The Bible says that each one of us should speak according to God's word. And what does this mean? It means that a Christian should speak the truth. We should not be involved in lies. And why? Because the Bible tells us that each one of us must speak the truth with our neighbor. And why? Because we must speak according to God's word. And God's word is perfect and true. Is this clear? So when the psalmist says, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart to be acceptable in your sight, what is he referring to? that whenever I as a Christian speak, I'm speaking according to what God's word says, not foolishness, not lies, and much less with malice, cursing, angrily, vengefully. Did you know that God's word in Matthew chapter 12 verse 36 says that from the abundance of the heart speaks the mouth. So what comes out of the mouth of a person is what is in their heart. And so pay close attention. If you are someone who, when you speak, you speak with vulgarness, or when you speak, you are cursing, shouting, insulting, what you must check is not your tongue, but instead your heart, because your tongue is only expressing what you have inside. When you see an aggressive society filled with hate, with harsh words towards one another and their relationships, then you know this is a society that is sick in their hearts and this is why the society speaks this way because 
One way to reveal the condition inside our heart is when we speak. Another verse I'd like for you to identify is in Proverbs 18, where it says, It says the tongue has the power of life and death. Did you know that with your words you can bless? And to bless means to wish well. When you bless your children, you are wishing the best for them. You are hoping that in this area or the other, tomorrow, in the future, with their family, with their health, that all will be well. Now the word curse is the opposite. It means to wish harm towards someone. Not necessarily does cursing mean to insult someone or to shout to someone and wish them the worst. Because sometimes there are people who when they speak, they say, why should things go well for you? Or you are a nobody. Or perhaps there are people who in their culture or their upbringing or education or learn from their parents to call their children dumb, useless, good for nothing. And this is reproduced from generation to generation. And sometimes we find it common to shout, to insult, disqualify. So why should we look and analyze the verses that I just mentioned? Because the psalmist is saying to God, God, may these words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight. So how can we achieve this, I insist? If out of the abundance of our heart speaks our mouth, what does this mean? It means that what God wants to change is our heart. God wants to remove from us bitterness, fighting, bickering, that aggressive spirit in our hearts. The Lord wants to treat us inside to remove anger, to remove resentment, guilt, and so many things that we have inside because if they are still inside of us, when we speak, they will be reflected and we will create bad environments. There are homes and families where it is very difficult to live and the family members themselves say, we do not like living here because it's always shouting and insulting. No one speaks to anyone, to someone else nicely, but instead they highlight each other's mistakes and defects. This is our experience at home. And based on this, we're destroying lives. So pay close attention, my dear family. When we are repeated a certain thing over and over again, we often end up believing it. If you're constantly repeating to your husband, to your wife, to your children, negative things over and over again, they will end up believing that situation. And so what I confess with my mouth comes from the depths of my heart. So this in regards to God's word is very important because God's word and the measure that I allow it to it, allow it to speak to me each day, to teach me and that I meditate in God's word each day. And as I bring these words to my heart each day, what am I going to speak? What words am I going to say? Well, then I'm going to speak with blessing. I'm going to speak with good words, with kindness. This message that we have been discussing during the last two weeks of the importance of God's word in our lives is precisely this. And this is where each Christian should give God's word the importance and the relevance each day, day after day. This is why God's word tells us that we should teach God's word to the, our children, repeating it to them over and over again along the way when they get up, when they go to bed. And this should happen in every scenario. If today the world is in the condition it's in, it is because people have thrown away God's word to the trash because it doesn't mean anything to them. They see it as a religious book, as a book that's always telling us what to do, what we can and can't do. And the devil has fooled us, making us remove God's word from our daily lives. Do you know what the Bible says in Joshua chapter 1 verse 8? In this passage, the Lord is making a calling to us a specific calling for our lives. And I would like for you this morning through the Holy Spirit to listen to God's calling. Joshua 1.8 says, Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night. So when this passage is saying, keep this book of the law always on your lips, what is it saying? It's saying that when you speak, you must speak conforming according to what is written in this book. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Look what else it says. It says, meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. 
Then let's follow the message in this verse that every day, day and night, let's meditate on what is written here. Because when you meditate and guard, keep these things in your heart, when you speak, people will notice. You will not be an aggressive person or a person that mistreats others, curses others. No, your words will build, edify, encourage. Your words will challenge others to change, to improve. The Bible over and over again invites us to do this. It's a very clear invitation by the Apostle Paul in Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3 verse 15 invites us to do what? It says, Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you are called to peace. So how can you let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts? Look at what it says in verse 16 of Colossians 3. It says, Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. Look at how beautiful Paul is saying, May God's word dwell abundantly in you. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly to teach you and exhort one another with all wisdom. And it goes on to say, Admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. This is what it's about. So do you see how God's word can transform you? How it can change your language? I've always challenged people consistently read scripture every day then after doing this consistently for one year listen to how you speak without you even noticing or doing anything else your language changes a hundred percent and you ask yourself what is happening inside of me or people will tell you you're some you're different you no longer speak the way you spoke before do you know why this happened because you kept god's word in your heart and this is the best thing you can do this is for this reason, I want to tell you once again, I want to say to all of the listeners of Mana, when I invite you to listen to this devotional, or when I invite you, for example, to take notes each day, I'm not trying to persuade you to do anything, to buy anything. I'm simply a man of God who preaches God's word. And God has given us these tools, these tools that have become spiritual disciplines. And so when I say that you should read the Bible, that you should take notes along with your family, with your husband, your wife, your children, that you approach scripture each day to read it, to take notes, to learn. Because even if you do not do this, God is still God. The church is the church. But what you are missing out on is on the opportunity to grow through these spiritual disciplines. And so what, what I am inviting you to do is to have a tool that will help you in your spiritual discipline so that you are more effective, so that your lives can be transformed. And so today, I would like to ask the following question. You can answer through our YouTube channel. What has been your experience with the Bible? Has it changed the way you are? Has it changed your heart? Has it changed your language? Has it changed you completely? Tell us your experience, because we're talking about what God's Word says. Allow me to wrap up with the expression of the psalmist where he says, May these words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight. And how can we achieve this, my dear family? Well, we can't just say, I'm going to take a course so that I may speak better, or I'm going to take a course from, so that I, I'm not so aggressive. I'm going to take a class that will help me with this language to stop cursing. But no, this doesn't change with a course no, it only changes when we allow God's word to fulfill its task in our hearts. Pray with me. And if you're praying with me, say, tell the Holy Spirit, I want to be close to you. Take it a step further. Tell him if it, it, ha if it has been difficult for you. Say, Lord, I have issues with discipline. My issue is that I want to, but I am not consistent. Tell him, but tell him that you want to do it. Tell him that you want to approach the Bible, as it says in this verse, day and night. And I want your word to truly cause something, do something in the depths of my being. And when all of this happens, I will see it reflected in my language, in my relationships, the way I treat others. Father, I know that you will do this. And for this reason, I give you 
the lives of each listener of Mana so that they be filled with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit places this sense in them to approach God's word each day, every day. We praise you, we bless you, we commend ourselves to you, and we ask for your blessing in the name and the authority of Christ Jesus. Amen and amen. And once again, I want to invite you to our Family Conference 2024, where everyone will have a spectacular event. The women, the children will have all types of games, recreation, but also teachings and formation. The same thing for our youth and the same for men. I know it's going to be a marvelous opportunity to grow, to mature. Remember, it will be in the city of Armenia, Colombia, but space is limited. So let us know if you're interested and we'll send you all the information so that you can join us with your family. I wait for you tomorrow in our Friday of prayer in Mana. Blessings to all.